Hey guys, this week we're talking about expressing power versus improving power, you know, um, and whatever that means. But first, let's explain power is force times velocity. But what is strength? Strength is the amount of force you're producing at any given rate. And so, like, uh, that's why there's all these qualities of strength. There's absolute strength, which is like the most amount of force you can reduce. There is strength speed, which is like where you're lifting a heavy amount as fast as possible. Then there's speed strength, which you're lifting. The big focus is speed and it's a lighter load. And then there's max velocity, which is basically unloaded. Think about sprinting. And so it's important to understand that there, so power and strength are very similar depending on what rate you're talking about producing force at. So um, some things that you want to consider going forward, and this is straight from Verkoshansky and Mel Sif's uh, super training, is this, is that um, there are specificity of transfer. And here's what I mean by that. There's specificity in the type of contraction you're making, the velocity of that contraction, um, the force of that contraction. And so like when you're doing something heavy or when your foot is striking the ground in a sprint, those are two entirely different amounts of force that are produced. And so um, then there is the motor unit, muscle fiber recruitment. You know, so you're going to get uh, better at uh, the rate coding of that particular load, at the coordination and the synchronization of that particular load. You got the biomechanic, biochemical adaptations. So you think about like uh, at the myosin actin level, the sarcomere level, you're going to get better at that um, calcium um, storage, calcium production, um, calcium release. I mean, and then the sodium, potassium pump, but also the the movement pattern, so the neuromuscular reflexes, the stretch shortening cycles that we're talking about, the elasticity of that muscle. So when your foot is striking the ground, it needs to be extreme elasticity versus like a squat. Elasticity is important, but not as important as when your foot strikes the ground. And so, and then sequential involvement of muscles um, with different functional qualities. So that's straight from the book. And so then region of the movement and the flexibility that's required to do that movement fatigue the amount of fatigue that you will have when you're doing the said movement on the on the uh, field of play and then the metabolism meaning the you know the energy system that you're using doing this event so like is it going to be anaerobic uh, a lactic uh, that creatine phosphate system is it the lactate system the anaerobic system uh, anaerobic obviously means when there's um, oxygen is not being the prime source of energy and then there's the aerobic so, uh, or is it a mixture? Like some, you know, some things like sprinting, there's a mixture of all those. Force can be produced at like th in three different ways and on a spectrum of these three, three ways I'm going to talk about. You can use uh, high loads or where the mass is high. Remember force is mass times acceleration. And so the if the mass is high, the load is high, then the acceleration is going to be slow. So on the extreme end, power lifting, you know, lifting as heavy as possible for one rep. And then there is the low loads or moderate load, low loads somewhere in there to high accelerations. So think about shot putting, throwing a javelin, uh, or even at the heavier end of that, weightlifting it happens at very high rates, but still pretty good loads. And then there's the moderate loads, moderate accelerations. So think about bodybuilding, that's where hypertrophy is going to happen. But there's really an uh, there's an athletic strength continuum. And here's what I mean by that. And this is straight from Sif and Verkashansky talk about, you know, um, sporting movements. And so the four qualities, the four main qualities, um, athletic qualities, that is, is going to be max velocity. So think about sprinting, um, maybe, you know, vertical leap, but it's not, that's not going to happen as fast as like uh, sprinting. So see, there's, there's a, a continuum here so it happens on all these all ends of the spectrum and so then you got speed strength where you lose you know somewhere 20 to 40 percent of your one rm you move that thing super fast speed is the is the top consideration then there's strength speed where it's, it's moving a um, pretty heavy load as fast as your plus as fast as possible um and then there's absolute strength meaning your one rms your you know like i said power lifting and all those things happen in continuum. And then there's athletic characteristics that are going to, um, they're going to come into play on all of those four characteristics. There's going to be starting strength, which is like, think about how quickly one can overcome inertia. There's going to be relative strength, meaning how good someone is at producing force with their own body weight. 
Then there's an acceleration strength, which is the athlete's ability to reach maximum force production at the highest rate possible. Then there is a reactive ability. So you think about your, you know, um, at the at the joint level, there are tendon and muscle qualities that make that more elastic. And then there's the efficiency of the stretch shortening cycle that, you know, th think about muscle spindle bulge tendon organs. And so, but here is what really matters when it comes to producing or like, should I lift heavy to get more explosive? Should I lift light to, to get uh, better at producing power? Or should I do whatever it is that produces the most power in the, in the gym? And this is it is you need to think about, do you have a strength deficit? And so I really like to, you know, um, Verkashansky and Mel Sif talk about the strength deficit uh, in, in depth in their book super training but uh, i think the modern day way of looking at things would be like uh look at the dynamic strength index and so if you look at someone doing a vertical leap uh and then you look at someone doing a one arm back squat how far off is that uh force reduction so like if someone can can produce um five th five thousand watts of, i'm sorry hold on so if someone is producing 5,000 newtons of force when they're doing a back squat, but then when they do a vertical leap, they're at 1,000. So they're not using much of that, you know, available force production at all. So that person needs to get really good at, you know, moving things faster. So they should focus on things that are either going to be like plyometrics, bounding, or even um, and expressing power with, with the Olympic list, like a clean or a snatch. Verkoshansky and Mel Sif themselves talk about that very thing. And I actually wrote down some page numbers. If, you know, if you look at pages 9, 10, 22, page 130, page 136 of that book, you can they talk about the Olympus in detail, how good they can be to help someone produce, you know, force at very high rates, aka power. And so, but now if someone on the other hand is, you know, if they're they're producing 3,000 newtons of force. And they do a back squat and they're producing like you know, 2,700 newtons when they're doing a vertical leap. Well, guess what? That dude is efficiently using the amount of force production available. So they need to get stronger. You know, they're not going to, they're not going to jump higher because all of their availability to produce force is being used. So that person needs to do like that. That might be time to consider doing some moderate loads of force production at, uh, and moderate amounts of acceleration. So bodybuilding. So, and then, you know, after that, after a few weeks of that, then transferring into strength product, you know, doing some five RM work, three RM work, but just getting stronger. So as you can see, it always depends, you know, like uh, there's, there's the choice you can do things with max speed. There's the choice you can do things with speed strength. That's 20 to 50% of the RM, you know, and that's once again, going back to their very recommendation. You know, so py plyometrics loaded and then unloaded would be a great way to do those. So speed, um, they say over and over again that the Olympic list would be a great idea for that, you know, snatch and cleaning or somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of your one RM. So you could do it with the squat. It's just that you're, you know, when you're talking about accelerative strength, which is someone's ability to get to their top end of their force production, as quickly as possible it's by nature the limp lifts are going to be superior to anything else because they cause that on, on just by proxy because if you don't produce force in that given amount of time is as high of force as possible you can't get out of the barbell so it happens by nature so anyway something to consider uh reactive ability if you want to improve improve that so to say that you're super strong but maybe you're not fast then doing some bounding would be great some isometrics at long lengths those would be great. These are all, you know, if you read my articles about isometrics, we'll talk about that uh, in detail. But um, so, so it all depends. Acceleration, I would choose the limp list. Uh, reactive ability, like think about doing like a, a trap bar deadlift with a lighter load and learning to get out of that and be able to reduce force as quickly as possible to overcome inertia. Those would be some good ideas. So it just depends. Find out what the athlete needs, and then you know you at that point will prescribe what they need. There is no one size fits all. There is no don't do a limit list, or you won't get better at producing power. That's crazy because you're going to produce the most power. And remember the specificity of transfer. 
is going to be specific in the rate of which you're performing that force. So the limitless, if that's what you want to do, if you want to create max power and get better at it, eventually you have to do that. Even if you spend time getting stronger, even if you spend time getting faster, eventually you got to come back to the, the place that you're trying to improve on. There you go. So I hope this helps. Um, you can email me, Travis at gymware.com with any of your questions. Uh, go to gymware.com for all of my articles in the blog section. Thank you.